No, oh, God bless you. So, I had not long, about a few hours ago, done a video where I was talking about a dream I'd had. We were talking to a, it was like this grapevine, saying, would you like to come home? And I was saying, yeah, I'd like to come home. And uh, it was all in context with this uh, collapse, kind of heart-based issues in the evening that night, which was due to uh, unnecessary drama in my workplace, because heart condition and stuff, so... The other video can talk on that in more detail. And I was saying to this vine with these beautiful purple flowers on it, it was really thick, big vine. And it had like these golden centers in the center of them. Like not like yellow, like right? what's above my head there where my finger's kind of pointing if I can get my hand in the right direction. Yeah, not like that. That's the... the Painting my daughter did years ago, but like gold, gold, kind of colored the center of these purple flowers, and I'm kind of marveling at them. And it's kind of like this big, massive vine I'm looking up at, and this kind of hospital bed in a garden full of flowers, and it says, Would you like to come home now? And I reply to it saying, Yeah, I'd like to come home. I'd like to come home now, but then all of a sudden, these three women come in and I seem to get distracted by them. They're like, what happened? So now I'm talking to them about everything I went through at my work that put me in this state. Mm. Then uh, as I'm talking to that, I end up in a lot of pain in my chest and I'm clutching my Bible. This particular one in the dream. So that's my pocket Bible that I always carry with me. And uh, so I'm waking up with all this pain and everything and so I go to work I do this video on uh, my little area where I normally would walk but I was so drained I could I was getting weaker and weaker as I got to the area and I had to get to the closest spot I know I could sit down so I did the video and after that really struggled to get back I literally felt like every step was just everything to do. So I made every step. I got home. Uh, I'm trying to think. I think I ate something. Might have had a drink. I'm not sure. No, I didn't. I didn't get around to having something to drink, but I had something to eat, and I just felt exhausted, needed to sleep and rest. Uh, I just didn't have much left in me after that. It took a lot out of me to get back, so... Did that, I had a sleep, and I had another dream. So this is why I'm talking about the dream I had. Now this one, I seem to be really excited to want to go and get something from far away, but it's like up a big hill, like a long walk away, but there isn't much time. So I'm like in a hurry to go, and I'm kind of racing up this big, long kind of, narrow hill and I'm on my way and it's like I want to go get some treasure but at the same time in the dream I feel like I'm not coming back and then all of a sudden time kind of runs out I'm not entirely sure how to explain that but I hear this voice from above say you need to come home now there isn't enough time and there's this like foreboding, not entirely sure, but then I hear thunder, like the most terrifying thunder that not only can you hear it, you can feel it. And I look up at the sky, and the whole sky just just splits, and it's like I'm like racing back downhill as quick as I can, and it's like the floor is shaking, and everything is kind of tearing apart and falling apart around us, like. I don't really, it, it was like all of a sudden something was in the sky that just kind of spread out across the sky. It was almost like some kind of blue entity or blue wings, I ain't entirely sure. 
but like I'm re- racing down this hill and it feels like the floor is shaking apart and kind of like not solid anymore under my own feet as I run down it. And there's like my children at the bottom of it. And I'm like, did you see the sky? Something is coming. Now, I don't know what the something is. But then it seems things have fallen from the sky as well. And the floor's all tearing apart. And it's like the floor is like being sucked down and because it's breaking apart everywhere around us. But all of us, there's like, I don't entirely know what I'm looking at. But there's like these trinkets and I guess pearls everywhere. And we seem to want to pick up the pearls and we're trying to pick up in our hands all these pearls for some reason. But at the same time I'm noticing all these pearls and we're picking these things up. I'm like, oh, I'm trying to pick up the trinket. They keep slipping through my hands. While I'm like trying to fill my hands with these things and my children are filling their hands with these things as well. At the same time, I can't help notice that everything kind of around me is kind of dreary looking. And everything's shaking and being torn apart. And something kind of told me I needed to wake up, so here I am. And I'm giving the the most detailed account of what I remember of what just happened in that dream. So, So I don't forget it. Um... I was trying to think, is there anything that sounds like this in the book? And when I woke up, I thought of Book of Revelation. Uh, When I woke up, my Bible was actually on Revelation chapter 9, funnily enough, because I was looking at that before I went to sleep. But that has no context on this and was in regards to a study I was looking at that uh, Joe Kirby was talking about. But I don't know what... And it was, but what I was looking at, it made me think of Revelation 6. And that time when there's the the great earthquake as well. Then, of course, uh, in the Gospels, Jesus warning about earthquakes in various places. But this, this was like a great earthquake. Um, Revelation 11 verse 13 In the same hour was there a great earthquake And the tenth part of the city fell And in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand And the remnant were affrighted And gave glory to the God of heaven The second woe is past And behold the third woe cometh quickly Revelation chapter 6 as well. Verse 14. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. I'm not entirely sure what to say on what I saw, but where we were, it's kind of like the ground was kind of like sinking into like a whirlpool sort of shape in the ground where we were looking at all these kind of pearls on the floor and trinkets i use the word trink because i don't know what these were or i had to describe them but strange things that we seem to really want to pick up and they were sought after for some reason don't know why they'd be sought after but they were but we need to stay prepared for whatever's coming And you need to stay in your Bibles. Because we are starting to see a very big divide in the world and people, in our nations, in our cities, in our towns. And we can't be divided and we can't let our hearts and our love run cold. Because nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom and famines and earthquakes in various places the very real possibility of dog eat dog where people come to the mindset of might is right and strong survive and so forth that's not us why is our servants harmless as doves love everyone as yourselves being the light in a dark world because the light 
shines in the dark. So we need to stay as light in a dark world. Is being prepared. Because there's going to be a lot of shaking in this world as it is. And that's not even without me even talking about earthquakes and skies being rent in too. And all this stuff going on in the world and strange things we can't explain that people are focused on in the sky, focusing your Bibles. But wherever I was running off to in that dream, it says there isn't going to be enough time. You need to get home. Well, all I can say is where we are right now is our pit stop. We need to run the race to the finish. We need to stand faithful to the end. We need to endure. We need to persevere. We need to stay faithful to the end, doing as we ought. We need to be obedient in Christ, attached to the vine, abiding in him, keeping his commandments. They are not heavy. He said the two greatest to love your father in heaven. That was to love God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind and all your spirit. And the second like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two hang all the laws and the prophets on these. Make sure you keep loving everyone as yourself. If you feel your heart growing cold, go to Revelation, to the letters of the churches. This I have against you, that you have, you have fallen from your first love. Pray and ask to stay in that, so you don't fall from your first love. That your heart doesn't grow cold, that your heart doesn't grow complacent, that you don't become willy-nilly, that you don't stop running the race that you don't stop fighting the good fight, that you keep preaching the gospel, that you do that that is pleasing to your Father in heaven, that he leads you in paths of righteousness for his namesake, from Psalm 23, that you put on your spiritual armor from Ephesians 6, 10 to 20, that you trust in God to be your refuge and your strength, that is from Psalm 91, the soldier's prayer, that with all this, when you're tired and weary, you go to Matthew eleven twenty-eight to 30 for him to renew you, just as in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, that renewed in mind and spirit, so you don't conform to the world, but you are transformed to know the perfect will of God, because whatever's coming, It's not good. And time is running. And there may be signs in the skies above and on the earth below. There might be things that are even more terrifying than what you've seen so far. And I know there have been things that people have considered too terrifying since this began in 2020. And that couldn't handle that. And there will be far more than that to consider when you read the book of Revelation. If you haven't read that book, I would strongly suggest you read the entire book. But I do strongly also suggest that you have a notepad and a pen handy. So that you can map out what you read because your Bible is a tapestry. Because God doesn't change. And you will find events a single event but written throughout your Bible because the prophets were consistently warning of a said event again and again and again. You see, God doesn't change. And he's been preparing us generation to generation to generation to make sure that each generation knew what was coming because he doesn't change. And that day is always going to be coming. So we need to always be prepared and always be praying in the Spirit. And always be praising God. And always seeking Him. And always confessing and repenting. Always rebuking wickedness, darkness, the unfruitful works of darkness. 
and having no part of it. To walk wisely and to redeem your time to walk wise wisely because the days are evil. And that means they can only get more evil. They can only get more dark. You need to praise the Lord and give him all glory and seek him in thanksgiving, asking him for wisdom and understanding, for his power and his work in your life, for his will, not yours, to be done in your lives. Praying for one another, for each other, and for those in authority in the places you do dwell, so you can be prepared for the things that are to come. This is a pit stop. And this isn't our home. And we're all waiting to go home. Because to live is Christ. Because we can still preach the gospel out here. Because we can still do what good we can while we can. Because we can. Because greater is he in me than the prince of this world, and it's not I that live, but Christ in me. And it's the life we live with Christ working through us. But know this, to die is gain, to finally be with him. So don't let anything you see happening scare you or tremble you. Because one day it will be time to go home. And first to the judgment seat of Christ. To reward according to all we have done. Whether good or evil. To stay close to your Lord and Saviour and keep praying. Pray, study and seek the Lord. Stand steadfast. Endure and persevere to the end. God bless each and every one of you.